Hello everybody, back here again for our vlog a day, and today is Tuesday the 19th, and today was a gorgeous day weather-wise, absolutely beautifully sunny, um, tiny little breeze, if any at all, wasn't much of a breeze, but got up in the mid to high 80s, something like that, just gorgeous out overall though. I would take this weather um, all year round, wouldn't have a problem at all. You could have got away with being outside, um, not doing a lot, and not sweating if you were in the shade. The sun was kind of kicking your butt if you were doing much, out running, that kind of deal. But it was definitely just a gorgeous overall day to be alive. So, ended up getting up today, had a handful of things to get done. I was hoping to um, see a friend of mine in Des Moines today. Uh, turned out they were not going to be able to make it. Um, I'd already kind of made some other plans. I was kind of wanting to do some stuff up there in Des Moines. And mostly it was the fact that Bruce had been acting all funky and weird the last few days. And I think part of it just kind of stems back to the fact that Last couple of times we've been to a couple of dog parks and stuff. There hasn't been any other, any other dogs there, and I think he was feeling a little bit, um, I guess, lonely. It's kind of what I was going with it. So he was kind of moping around and kind of getting these little angst up a little bit. Every once in a while he gets a little wild hair up his butt, and he just has to go out and kind of run it off. And he'd been needing to do that a lot lately. And I thought maybe if we got him to a dog park with a bunch of other dogs and did something like that, we'd be able to actually kind of work some of that stress out. So I ended up taking him up there. Um, Ended up um, hitting a couple different dog parks, went to the Gray's Lake, let him swim a little bit in that. Um, stopped at a couple RV dealers up there looking for myself, an RV. Might go with a camper. Right now I'm really looking for a motorhome, mostly because I want to pull my trailer, my dirt bikes and kayaks and that kind of stuff behind it. And it'd be a whole lot easier not to have to have um, basically two trailers hooked behind me. I could legally do that and that wouldn't be that big a deal. But it becomes a giant pain in the butt trying to find a place to park. It's bad enough with an RV and a trailer or even a van like or a truck pulling a large camper. But you add that second trailer behind it and there's really nowhere you can park worth a damn. Like if you have a trailer parked uh, behind your trailer, your truck and trailer or RV and trailer, you can kind of pull into those double parking spots, nose to nose, and you kind of cheat that a little bit. You add a second trailer to that and you just add another 20 foot to your deal and you are not parking there at all. So it really becomes a giant ordeal. Plus when you come to backing, it's a double reverse turn thing and even when you're backing up with a single trailer you got to turn the opposite way you want to go so when you're backing two of them you got to turn the way you want to go but then it turns the other opposite then back opposite and it's just it's kind of a pain in the butt um i've done a few backings with um the multiple trailers luckily not had to do a lot of it and i'm not looking to do it on a daily or weekly basis if i go that route so as of right now um leaning towards a motorhome didn't find anything that i wanted that was in a price range i wanted to pay some of those are just, oh my God, they're insane. I mean, you're looking at an RV starting out like the small ones, the one company I stopped at, and they're like a hundred grand for their smallest one. And I'm like, um, what do you got in the used world? And it's like, well, we got two to look at. And one of them was like $170,000 for the used, which I mean, it was a quarter million dollar unit when it came out new, but I'm like, okay, no, I'm looking for like way, way, way less than that. So I'm looking for like one tenth of that, like 17 grand would be a much better better picture for me not 170 grand so then we kind of looked around a little bit there didn't have much luck um stopped at a couple other shops a little better luck one of the guy was a dick um wouldn't hardly i couldn't get him to help me at all couldn't get him off the phone yakking at people and stuff and i'm like standing there and he was calling like trying to order and he was just it was the guy was a dick absolutely a dick there um basically i asked him but the finally guy in between phone calls got him to um, telling me the one unit that I was wanting to look at was actually open at least. And he goes, well, if I get a chance, I might come out and talk to you about it. And I'm like, okay, go fuck yourself kind of thing. So I went ahead and I went out there and looked at it anyway, just kind of give myself a look around and see what it was. And it had some water damage inside where it's leaked at some point. And I'm really right now, um, maybe, who knows, if I get desperate, I'll have to look into that. But it'll have to be a lot cheaper than what he was asking. He was in like the $10,000 range for a little class, like a really small class A and... I think I can find a much better deal without water damage for 10 grand. So this thing was like 96 like that. It was nothing really fancy. It was just everything about it. It just had a little bit of off tinge to it. And I could tell it was his, um, basically his get people on the locks. He had a big sign on it out front. It looked like a big RV. Looked fairly nice from the road at 10 grand or 9,880 bucks. Like that stupid thing. It was to get people on the lot. Then everything else he had was 25 or 30,000. So... Next place I stopped at, they had a decent one there, but he was wanting like 24 grand for it. It wasn't too bad, but I'm like, wow, 24 grand is a lot of money also in that ballpark range there. And then he goes, well, I got this other one over here from 1985, 
and he's like 5,600 bucks or no, 60, 5,900 bucks like that, like six grand somewhere in that ballpark range. And I went and looked at it and it was backed in with a bunch of other trailers around it. You couldn't even get into it. It's like, well, I know it needs a battery and this and that stuff. So I'm looking at it and there's like cracks in the fiberglass in the back and the top and literally wouldn't. He goes, well, I can't even open it because right now I got to move these other trailers to even get into it. And, but if you want, it's only six grand. And I'm like, uh, I kind of like to be able to step inside it at least and see how bad it stinks, like mold and that. And he's like, well, kind of like, the guy's kind of a bit of a dick. And I'm like, okay, whatever, man, have a good one. Which I understand if I'm there looking at like a 17,000 or 15,000 or even a 5,000 dollar unit, nowhere near the commission they're going to get on their hundred thousand dollar units, but you don't have to be such a pompous ass about it. So was not impressed. The one, the kid that was selling the uh, newer stuff, sweet guy. I mean, awesome guy, you know, had no problem with that at all, but it just not my price range. I'm never going to be buying. Well, I shouldn't say never. I can never see the near future where I'll be buying a hundred thousand dollar RV. So that's not my price range at all. But we got done there, um, hit up other dog parks and stuff. Like I said, um, end up having a really good time at one of the dog parks. It's usually a pretty busy park. Went to it, had a good time. Bruce ended up rolling a poor um, boxer albino, the pure white, the white, the pink nose, all that kind of stuff. And we were playing pretty good quite a bit earlier than shortly before it took off. They threw the ball and that boxer took off after it. And Bruce just comes shooting across the park and slammed into that poor dog and like rolled her on the ground. So she had grass stains all on her right side. The, the people that had it had her were laughing their butt off and they thought it was pretty funny. But she was really, I think it kind of, I, I mean, I don't usually see my dog end up beating up a dog so bad that just rolled her to the, she ended up with grass stains on her. So I did feel pretty bad about that, but overall had a really great time. He met a couple other dogs he really hit it off with and had a lot of fun. So I um, went to the chiropractor while I was up there, saw him. Um, my arm's been going numb and that when I'm running ever since my fall last week, really having some issues. And he told me my shoulders, my back was out severely bad. He's got me all taped up with KT tape and told me to take two weeks off of running. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, Doc, that's not going to happen. So I plan on running a lot farther up there today than what I am doing. Um, after getting taped up, my shoulders were burst virtually like immobilized. It's hard to even like put a shirt on. It was a pain in the butt. I barely got this shirt on. I might not get it off. I, I don't know what I'm going to do there. I'm going to have to probably get some help, I think, take my shirt off because I can't move my arms above my head and that. So it ought to be really fun trying to sleep tonight. He told me to leave the tape on for three days and then let me know how it feels and see if I need to retape or not. So who knows? Um, I ran anyway. I just came home, ran a short little, I think, mile and a quarter, something really simple, and went that route. So I'm not going to lose my running streak over something as stupid as a freaking shoulder injury. So that right there is not going to be the case. But I did definitely cut my mileage back. I was planning on running, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 miles up there is what my goal, I, what my plan was. Just some fun little trails, kind of run around. Then after talking to the doc and freshly being adjusted, he hurt me so bad. Like he was just in my neck and pulling my head around. And I've never been hurt so bad by a chiropractor. But I told him before I saw him the first time that either I don't, I'm such a cheapskate, I'm not gonna go back every week. I don't have insurance in that. So if you can hurt me severely bad today and make it last a lot better, I'll take the pain today. And he literally, almost like he was taking that as a challenge. So he hurt the show. Like there's a couple of times where it was almost the verge where like, I just couldn't take the pain. Like he was pushing my neck so hard here, pushing my head to the side, pushing down. It was like, I thought I was going to pee a little. Like it was so much pain. It was ridiculous. But hopefully I'll feel better. Uh, I'm taking some ibuprofen and that. Uh, I'm going to try and get some sleep tonight. We'll see how it goes with the tape on my shoulders and that. And I'm not sure how it's going to take place. I might end up sleeping out on the reclining couch and see if that helps my positioning better. So that's all I got for now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe and wonderful day. Thanks for watching.